Hello and welcome to Behind the Music and happy Reformation weekend. This year, like every year for over 500 years, we're celebrating the Reformation and the changes that Luther was calling for in the church. About four years ago, I had the opportunity to go to Salt Lake City, Utah for a regional convention for the American Guild of Organists. These are always great times because you get to see old friends, meet new friends, you're around your colleagues, you get to go to seminars, workshops, and one of my favorite parts is going to concerts. Many of the concerts will feature pieces that are either really popular and you get to hear them in a new way, or perhaps obscure music that you've never heard before, or new works. And it's always nice to see what composers are writing for the organ and for choirs. One of the pieces that caught my ear that year was a piece by Daniel Gothrop. I was familiar with him because he's well known as a choral composer, but I didn't realize that he's also an organ composer. And he'd written this piece called a Reformation Symphony, Symphony Number no. 3 for organ. And he based it on really well-known and favorite uh, German chorales. This piece is set in four movements. The first movement is based on Nun come der Heiden Highland. This is in our hymnal, Savior of the Nations, come. And this is the opening piece of this symphony. So I'll play you just a little bit from it. <laughs> So he sneaks a little bit of the tune in there. You have this big fun entrance, dun, 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 trumpets and fanfare, and then he tucks it in, Savior of the Nations come. So that's a nice way to begin. I was fortunate that at this convention he was there to hear the premiere of this piece, and so I talked to him afterwards and I told him how much I had appreciated it and how I was really excited to play it, and at that point it wasn't published yet, but he told me it was going to be published soon. and where to go to buy it. So I pre-ordered and I had it in time for 15, the anniversary of 1517 in 2017 to learn for the 500th anniversary. Now one of my favorite movements in it is this next movement, the second movement. In this second movement he has as a capriccio form and it's based on the tune Vakadalf, which in our hymnal is Wake Awake. I'm sure you recognize it. I don't know about you, but if somebody came and tried to wake me up with that music, I'd be pretty happy for the rest of the day. So that's the second movement of this symphony, the Capriccio. The third movement is a Largo based on Aus Tiefer Note, which is out of the depths have I cried to you. And so in this movement, he's trying to express the sorrow in the morning. And it's slow and also really beautiful, I think. Isn't that beautiful? And I was playing the melody in a four-foot flute there. It's so it's high like a flute would be playing beautifully. I just love that movement also. 
Then the final movement, if you're a Lutheran, I'll give you one guess what Lutheran chorale he chose as the final movement for his Reformation Symphony. You've guessed it. A Mighty Fortress, Ein Festerberg. A Reformation Symphony wouldn't be complete without this famous hymn, A Mighty Fortress. Normally when we sing A Mighty Fortress, it's in four. A mighty fortress is our God, right? So he decides to break it up and he starts it in three. Get some more stops here for you. Here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Here we go. So not your typical of Mighty Fortress, but you definitely recognize the melody, right? So it goes on like that for a while. And then in the middle section, he puts it back into four. And the pedal, pedal gets the melody. And so on and forth. You know how that goes. Back and forth, back and forth until we get to the final section. This section he starts in ostinato, which is a pattern that repeats over and over. We sort of talked about similar things last week when we talked about the canon, but this ostinato is the same exact pattern. Da, 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 da. It's in the left hand and the pedal, and they're going together like this. funky, but he just wants to mix it up a little bit there. So the pedal gets a turn again. So it's going back and forth. The melodies in the right hand, mel melodies in the pedal. Melodies in the right hand, melodies in the pedal. So this is a very cool symphony, and I hope at some point I can play the whole thing for you. But for now, if you tune into worship this weekend on Reformation Weekend, you'll get to hear this A Mighty Fortress, the final movement of Gothrop's Reformation Symphony. Thank you so much. Have a great Reformation, and I'll see you next week.